All right, thanks for watching, and today I'm going to show that the function f of x equals 1 over x is continuous. Let's say continuous at x0, which is non-zero. It's not defined at zero, so it would be silly to show it's continuous there. So what we need to show is that for all epsilon, there is delta such that if okay, x is not in the domain, so x is non-zero, then x minus x naught less than delta implies uh, if one over f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. All right, so let's do this. So step one, let's find our delta. Find delta, so let's try to estimate f of x minus f of x naught. Well, that is one over x minus one over x naught, which just becomes, put it on a common denominator, x naught minus x over x x naught. And then that becomes, well, absolute value of a is absolute value of minus a. So it's absolute value of x minus x naught over absolute value of x naught, if you want, times absolute value of x. Well, let me just respect the order, um, x times x naught. All right. Now, the numerator is good because that's where delta comes from. That's the stuff we can control. This is also good because it's constant. The only thing we have to control is this absolute value of x term. Now, here's a little problem. Because before we said absolute value of x minus absolute value of x naught, that's less than one, and then that was very good because we could you know, estimate some terms. The only issue is, Let's say, for instance, x naught is one half. Then, well, if x is minus x naught is less than one, then there's a problem because x could be zero, first of all, or it could even be negative. And that's not what we want. What we really want is something that's very close to x naught. So here's what we're going to do. Suppose, this is not good. Uh, suppose x minus x naught is not less than 1, but even smaller. In particular, choose it to be less than absolute value of x naught over 2. And then you'll see good things will happen, because then what do we know uh, about x minus x naught? Well, then, because we want to estimate absolute value of x, Let's apply the reverse triangle inequality. So this is x minus x naught. And then, in particular, and again, you'll see why, in general, a is greater or equal to minus a. So the absolute value of a is greater or equal to minus a. So this becomes greater or equal to minus absolute value of x minus absolute value of x naught. And so, in particular, this is x naught minus absolute value of x. Again, it seems to go the other way around, but promise you, I promise you, you know, it's, um, it'll make sense. Then, what do we get is x naught minus x. Well, if you follow this chain, you get it's less than or equal to x minus x naught, but we know x minus x naught is less than um, x naught over 2. So in the end, we get x naught minus x is less than x naught over 2. And therefore, and then I'll leave this here, what we get is absolute value of x, if you put it here, that is bigger than x naught minus absolute value of x naught over 2. But that's good, because then we get x naught over 2. And by the way, if you chose 1, then again we would be in trouble because x naught minus 1 might be negative and it doesn't tell us anything interesting. Here we get something interesting. Absolute value of x is bigger than this positive constant. So it gives us a lot of info and you might
might be like, Kayem, does it go the wrong way? No, it doesn't, because now let's take reciprocals. So now, 1 over absolute value of x becomes less than 2 over absolute value of x naught. And this is good. That's what we want. Because now, let's go back to our f of x minus f of x naught. So that is x minus x naught over x times x naught. But then, that's just 1 over x times this other junk. So this becomes less than, again, we have x naught, x minus x naught, and then x naught, and then 2 over x naught which really becomes 2 over x naught squared times x minus x naught. And now we let that be less than epsilon, which finally gives x minus x naught. So x minus x naught is less than um, epsilon x naught squared over 2. Very good. And now let's... We found our delta, finally, and now let's just do our proof. So let epsilon be given. And let delta, all right, careful, not just this. Because remember, at some point, we assumed x minus x naught is less than absolute value over, of x naught over 2. So we really need to choose the smaller one of the two because we want both inequalities to be true. So let delta be the minimum of that. Then, well, on the one hand, we know x minus x naught is less than x naught over 2 which gives us the good inequality that we wanted. So x, I think, was bigger than uh, 2 over x naught. No, x naught over 2, sorry. And then on the other hand, we get that f of x minus f of x naught. Again, we simplified that to be x minus x naught over x naught x, and now this becomes, as before, less than uh, 2 over x naught times x naught times x minus x naught, and that's 2 over x naught squared times x minus x naught, but then that becomes strictly less than 2 over x naught squared times epsilon x naught squared over 2. And now this, all this cancels out, and at the end, we have our satisfactory epsilon. And therefore, what do we get? We get that 1 over x is continuous at every non-zero x naught, so it is continuous on its domain. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.